Okay, starting the exponential radical form as well as radical operations notes. Um, we're gonna make it a two day. So theoretically, if I have some variable x to some power m, but also taking the nth root, this can be written a couple of different ways. So this is technically simplified form. If I wanted to write it in radical form, that would be um, the nth root of x all raised to the m power. If I wanted to write it in exponential form, that would be my variable x to the exponent over root power, so m over n. This one is called radical form, and this is called exponential. So exponential form takes the uh, root in the power and writes it as one singular fractional exponent. Radical form has the radical in it with the exponent outside of it. And then simplified form, which is the way that we use to simplify it down to its final answer, has the exponent on the inside of the radical. Okay, so these are the three different forms that we're kind of going to be working with today. Go ahead and fix attendance. No, this is pretty much the only rule. Let's go ahead and start with an example. We're just going to rewrite this as a radical. So I want to rewrite it in this form. Huh? Okay. So when I'm doing this, the first thing I have to note is what is my um, power and what is my root. So the numerator of my fraction is my power. So this is going to be the m in the examples above. My denominator then is my root and is going to be the n from the examples above. And whatever's on the inside of the parentheses is the x from the examples above. So then I'm just going to rewrite this in that radical form using the appropriate x, m, and n. So then when I rewrite this, it's going to be the fifth root of 3x all taken to the fourth power. So are we just going to write stuff out like this? We're going to convert it between the different forms. Yes, that's what we're starting with. Of course, in the end, we will simplify it as well, but we're just going to start this way. That's about to ask. Does this mean we have to solve it too? We will, yes. Does that seem overly difficult to anyone? No, let's do another one. N is the root, M is the power, yes. So this time we've given an exponential and I would like to rewrite it in, uh, sorry, yeah, in radical form, just like the previous one. So the first things I do I are identify our power and our root. So the power is the numerator. So here it's going to be 1. And then my root is my denominator, so here it's going to be 2. And then what's going inside the radical is my x. And then I just go ahead and rewrite it. So this would be 6n inside of a square root, all taken to the 1 power, which we can just leave as the square root of 6n. Well, that's what square root is. Remember, we don't have to put the 2 on the front. You can if you want to, but I'm going to. Yes. to go from what? Um, simplified moves the exponent on the inside. Oh, yeah. But we'll get there. We'll get there. Okay, let's 
let's go ahead and do another one. Actually, this is what I'm going to let you do on your own as a practice. Change that into radical form, please. Ariana, what's it going to be? Well, it is an exponential right now. I'd like to change it into radical form. So I have to identify my root and my power, and then also what goes on the inside. Hannah, help her out. What's this one going to turn into? The square root sign, right? Yeah, square root sign, sign. To the power of one. And if you don't want to put the parentheses to the power of one, you do not have to because it doesn't change the value at all. So you can just leave it as the square root of b. Everyone okay with that? Anybody confused? Let's do another one. Again, just changing this in radical form. Pfeiffer, talk me through it. So we're going to put the square root of the five plus the fifth root. So we call it the fifth root. Good. And you're going to put the second root parentheses to the one. Correct. So this would technically be how it's written, but you don't have to have that parentheses to the one power because anything to the one power is just itself. Pfeiffer, how did you know this would be a fifth root? So how did you know that square root would have a little five on the front of it? Because there was a 5 in my denominator, my denominator is always the root value. Good. Okay, so he recognized that that's what that means. Yeah, denominator goes on the outside of the radical. Right, or inside technically, it doesn't matter, but yes. Because it's a square root, so you don't have to put a 2 on the front of it. You can if you want to. But it's redundant at that point. Any questions, concerns, or issues with this one? No? Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to practice going the other direction. So we're going to be given a radical, and we're going to change it into exponential form. So we're going to start with the example that is the cube root of x all to the eighth power. Just like before, when I'm initially doing these, it's good to identify your m, your n, and then what we're taking all of that to the power of. So what, which value here is going to be my m value? I'm not hearing any definite answers. Eight, because that is my power. So this is my m. What's my n value? The three. And then my x is just going to be the x. So then when I rewrite this, this becomes x to the 8 over 3 power, and then we're done. Do we see how that worked? Do we see where we pulled those values from? Well, yeah, but we're going to do a little bit more with it, of course. So I'm going to give you one to do on your own. On your own, please rewrite that in exponential form. This might actually just be a one-day assignment. Huh? Yeah, same as the one we just did. Emily, talk me through it. Good. 
Okay, so this becomes 6n. I would like to put it in parentheses if it's more than one term. That way we don't accidentally confuse that it's just the n to the 5 thirds power. Um, the whole thing to the 5 thirds power because the whole thing is under the radical. And then we're done, right? Show of hands who got down right. Okay, and that was new to you, so just be sure if there's more than one thing in here, we put it in parentheses. Okay? There's a number in front of Right. Yep. Or if there's more than one letter, that, that too. Let's do one more of these, and then we'll do the next portion. So this is a little 7 on my radical and 11xy on the inside. I would like to rewrite this as an exponential problem, D. Grant, talk us through it, please. Okay, I'll give you a minute. I'll give you a minute. Yeah, Okay, Grant, are we ready? Somewhat. Somewhat, okay. Tell me what you're doing. Correct. <laughs> Why did you say that it has to be in parentheses? Because it's more than one uh, number and variable. Yes, continue. Okay. Perfect. So the number one mistake I would see here is that somebody would put zero over seven because we technically didn't have a power this was all raised to. But we should all recognize that when there is no power there, we assume it's a one. Right? Because anything to the one power is just itself. Who have this answer? That is 100% correct. That was flawless, Grant. Very good job. Any questions, concerns, or issues on that? So we're going to go ahead and do the last portion, which is now just using all of these rules and simplifying these expressions as far as we can go. So the example I'd like to start with is 81x to the 6, all to the 3 halves power. It's going to be fun. We are going to have to go backwards from exponential to radical, and then we're going to simplify from there. Oh. Um, we will simplify this one, but we're going to do it together. Are we ready? I suppose. I suppose. Kind of. Maybe. Okay, dokie. So what we're going to start with is changing this into exponential form. Kaylee, not exponential, sorry, into radical form. What is this going to be in radical form? H. What's going to go on the inside of my radical? X to the sixth, right? Yeah. Then what? Um, What's my root value? Am I taking the fourth root, the fifth root, the second root, third root? What are we doing? Right, so the bottom of my root value, so here I'm doing a square root. And then the three is my exponent, so that whole thing gets raised to the three power. So when we change this, we should have changed it into the square root. 
of 81x to the 6, all cubed. We're not done. Don't be doing that. Oh, God. Yes. Okay, so say that again very, very loudly. Yes. You got to use the extra. Hey. <laughs> so we're going to be using the exponent rules from the last lesson, and we're going to be using the simplifying radical rules from uh, last unit. I'm going to show you there are two ways to solve this problem. I'm going to show you the easier way first, and then I'll show you the other way. Okay? So the easier way is that we simplify this first under the square root and then cube our answer. Honestly, I think this is the fastest way of doing this problem. Other people would do the raising it to the exponent first and then taking the square root. Yes, yeah, so we're going to factor tree the 81, and then we're going to pull out groups of 2 from the x to the 6. So let's factor tree the 81 first. Oh, what did you just say? 9 and 9. So 81 is the same as 9 squared, right? So I can rewrite this as the square root of 9 squared, x to the 6, all to the third power. Which means I can take that 9 squared and my square is going to cancel and the 9 is going to move outside. So that this becomes 9 times the square root of x to the 6, all to the third power still. So all I did was simplify the 81 by taking the square root of it. Yeah, you can still break it down all the way. It's still going to work out the same. Are we all okay there so far? Now we have to do the same thing with the x's. I'm going to write all, all six, sorry, all six of my x's out, and we're going to see how many groups of two that I have. Hold on. Shh. So I get 9 times the square root of x, 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 6 x's, all so cubed, we can't forget that part. I'm looking for identical groups of how many x's? Two. Two, because that's what my root is. So it has to match what my root here is. So if you want to write a 2 here, you're more than welcome to, but it doesn't need to be there. So I'm just going to count how many I have. One, two, three, with none left over. So then when I rewrite this, it's 9 times the square root of x squared, x squared, x squared. My squares and my group cancel, and those base x's come outside. And my root then disappears because I have nothing left under it. My next step is to put my x's together, and this becomes 9x cubed. And then I'm going to raise all of that to the third power as my final answer. So then this is going to become 9 cubed, which I can put in my calculator, times x to the 3 times 3, which is 9. No, when we multiply like that, the exponents multiply together. And it should come out to 729x cubed as your final answer. It was much more ugly if you took everything to the third power first. I will tell you that. So just to not confuse you, we're only going to do it this way because the other way is going to take twice as long. So, no. Okay, so we're going to do one's a lot smaller numbers, but I wanted to do an ugly one first. Do we all have this written? Yeah. Awesome. I'm going to give you one that you're going to start on your own. And then we will come together and go over it. Oh, from three to nine. 
And then it went from nine to three at the end. It should be a nine. You're right. Okay. Good job. Okay, so this is the one you were doing. K to the sixth, all to the three halves power. First thing you need to do is change it over into a radical and then simplify from there. Emily, are you done? Awesome. Sure. Yes, Kim. Other than that, we're good, yeah. <laughs> One more of the simplifying? You'll see. Okay, are we ready? This is the last simplifying example before I do one introductory example for the next thing. You'll see. Just so you are uh, writing correctly, there are five zeros. So this is 10,000 X to the fifth, all raised, no, just kidding, it's 100,000 X to the fifth, all raised to the three-fifths power. It is not. Because you're not always going to get nice small numbers, so we should practice a super ugly one before you get too far into everything. We did, now we're going to do an ugly one last. I respect that. We did an ugly one, and we did a pretty one then. When I am presented with a problem like this, what is the first thing I need to do? Not factor tree it yet. Rewrite it as a radical problem. So then this is the fifth root of 100,000 x to the fifth all raised to the third power. How did I know this was a fifth root problem? Because there was a five in the denominator of my fraction. Good. 
right off the bat, is there anything that I notice simplifies really nicely, Ebony? The X. The X. Because it's X to the fifth, and this five matches my root five, which means it disappears and my base comes out fine. So this is now X times the fifth root of 100,000, all cubed. So that actually made this a lot easier already. And now I get to factor to this 100,000 and break it down. What multiplies together to get 100,000? Five and what? Five and 20,000. Five is prime, 20,000 is not, so I need to break that one down farther. What multiplies together to get 20,000? Two and 10,000. Two is prime, 10,000 is not. What multiplies together to get 10,000? Two and 5,000. Two is prime again, 5,000 is not. What multiplies together to get 5,000? Or 5 and 1,000. I think that one will be easier. Thank you. <laughs> what breaks down 1,000? 2 and 500. What breaks down 500? 5 and 100. What breaks down 100? 2 and 50. 50 breaks down into 5 and 10. And 10 breaks down into 2 and 5. Okay. I'm glad you thought this was fine, but let's make sure that we have all of them written. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through and I'm going to figure out how many twos I have and how many fives I have, and I'm going to rewrite 100,000 as that combination of twos and fives. Okay, so this becomes x times the fifth root of, I'm going to go into my twos first. Wait a minute. And then I'm going to do all my fives. I noticed that I had five twos and I had five fives. So I'm going to go ahead and group them accordingly with the appropriate exponent. And then I'm going to pause for a second so we all catch up. Ariana. Why is it super nice that it broke down into the fifth root of two to the fifth times five to the fifth? Why can I cancel them out? Because they're the same as my root. So this five cancels with that. This five cancels with that. And then my bases are going to come outside. So this becomes two times five times x. Nothing then is left under my radical, so that goes away. And I can simplify this down into 10x. But it wasn't just 10x, it was 10x all cubed. And I can put that in my calculator. So when we do, we figure out that 10 cubed turns into 1,000. And x times, or x to the third power turns into x cubed. X cubed. So my final answer is 1,000 x cubed. And then we are finished with that problem. Okay, any questions, concerns, or issues so far? I'm going to show you one introductory thing, and then we are 100% finished with this whole lesson. Right, so there's a reason we pick certain numbers. Okay, so the introductory problem that we have 
is negative 2 times the square root of 2 plus 2 times the square root of 2 minus 2 times the square root of 2. All I'm asking you to do here is to simplify this. How? I'm going to show you in a second. So as we're looking at it, it looks really, really ugly. But I also noticed that there are some similarities between all of these terms. What do all three of them have in common? Mm -hmm. The square root of 2. That acts just like a variable. So when this radical is the same, I can take all of the coefficients and add them together and then put my answer in front of the square root of 2. So it's negative 2 plus 2 minus 2. So my answer is negative 2 root 2. So when all the radicals are the same, we can combine them by putting together the coefficients on the front and then rewriting our answer as those numbers put together with whatever my common radical was. Is this implying that there are going to be problems with radicals that aren't the same? Uh, eventually, yes. So we are 100% done now. Okay, what's your question? Hallelujah. Hold on.